I was one of the optimists that felt the rovers would survive the first winter and that we would have an extended mission. But I never thought they would last through three Martian winters and continue to explore for five years. We thought that you know we we were going to be lucky if we got three months out of these rovers. We've got five years out of these rovers, and they just keep going. And it seems like every day is better than the day before. The mission just keeps getting better and better and better the longer it goes. How do I feel about the fact that it's going on for five years? Exhausted. <laughs> I mean, really tired. Everyone on the planet Earth is sharing in the experience of exploring the surface of Mars through our two surrogate children, Spirit and Opportunity. You're seeing Mars uh, with, with 3D color stereo vision, just as if you were standing there yourself. The rovers are just about your height, um, and so they see the world from your perspective, and, and just as you would see it if you were there. Now, they are well-named. Opportunity really has been incredibly opportunistic and lucky. It basically found water from its lander, found its own heat shield, and we were able to examine for the first time a heat shield that was used on another planet because it happened to land nearby. Spirit really has had to have a lot of spirit to, to keep going. When we're hit by dust storms, we get cleaned off, and that's what's enabled the rover to survive this long. When we broke the right front wheel, we made one of the major scientific discoveries. By dragging this wheel behind us, we're digging this trench, and we're seeing what's under the surface, and what we're finding everywhere we look are these salts and minerals like silica and sulfur that had to have been put there by hot water. This last winter, uh, when we had to park for more than nine months in the same location because we just didn't have enough power to, to drive, the one thing we could still do was take pictures. And we did take, over the course of many, many weeks, sort of one frame at a time, this beautiful, high-resolution, full-color image of the location around Spirit and it's one of the uh, most detailed, highest resolution images we've ever taken from the ground. Get the Victoria was great. I mean, it was 21 months of trudging endlessly across these plains and hardly seeing the scenery change at all. I mean, you know Victoria's out there. We've got the orbital images, we know where it is, we know how far it is, we were measuring distance to the nearest meter. And then one day we're right at the, uh, at the rim of it and poof, there's just this spectacular scenery, this fabulous geology laid out in front of us. And yeah, the combination of just what a glorious view it was, plus so much effort that went into getting there. Pulling up to the rim of Victoria was to me one of the really special moments in the whole mission. One of the most memorable and poetic images from the entire mission is an image that Spirit took of the Earth. It was the very first picture that has ever been taken of the Earth from the surface of another planet. Earth is the evening star. Mars is such a complicated place, and these are such capable vehicles, that there will never come a time when we're done. Regardless of whether the, when this mission ends, whether it's tomorrow or five years from now, there's always going to be some wonderful, tantalizing thing just beyond our reach that we didn't quite get to.